The very first time that I ever lifted weights, it was in a gym class. You know, I was kind of as awkward as a fish out of water. And uh, I remember the coach put a certain weight on the bar. It was like 135, you know, and, and all the other guys go through and squat it. And I go up and I mean, it just, it dropped me straight to the floor. And that was probably one of the most embarrassing things. You know, you got 15 girls and all your buddies sitting there watching you. And it's like, you know, from then on, I hated the weight room. There are times even now, and I still remember that moment in middle school, you know, when I fell to the floor and, and draw from that, you know, because I never want to feel that again. I never want to go back to that point where it was like, I can't do this. So, yeah, I mean, that was, the gym has always been something that I've motivated myself from. Even when it was negative, you know, I still tried to build positives from it. The Rollins painting was, was done by my tattoo artist. Um, you know, I, I do have a quote by Rollins on my forearm, and uh, it says, it'll destroy you if you try to make it mean any, anything to anyone but yourself. And that's taken from the context of, uh, you know, if you spend your whole life trying to explain what you're doing, explain who you are, you actually lose sense of who you are and what you're doing, and it'll actually destroy the, the essence of what you are. So it's better to just do it and lead by example and lead by action than to constantly be trying to live through words. My dad worked 70, 80 hours a week. He was up before I was was up and he was home after I was in the bed. And um, you know, you don't understand that as a kid. You don't always have the things that maybe some of your friends have, like material things like Air Jordans or, you know, the newest pair of shoes or clothes or whatever, you know, and a lot of that breeds anger and misunderstanding and um, you know, Rollins always writes from that perspective. You know, he, he seems to have a, a voice that that speaks from some place that we can all relate to. You know, we all haven't been given this easy life. We all haven't been given this this easy road to walk on. But, you know, when you get a little bit older and you get a little reflection on things, I became a guy that worked 70, 80 hours a week with a son. And I was almost mirroring my father, the person that I hated as a kid, I grew to respect the most as a man. And I think that's what Rollins gives you the perspective on is you really have to, to analyze the situation fully and until you've maybe walked a mile in that person's shoes, you can't understand. And also, Rollins is one of the few kind of aggressive, angry type writers that, that really speaks openly about love. And I think that's pretty amazing that somebody who is, you know, so chiseled and he even, you know, he fits the mold perfectly. He's got the super, you know, super square jawline and... Uh, you know, the tough brow and the military style haircut and raspy voice, you know, just a man's man. But he also, he opens up a lot about love. And I think that's something that, that really touches me too, because I think uh, for as manly as the things that I do, I am an emotional type person. You know, I watch a lot of movies that that move me. I read a lot of books that move me. And um, I think that that was my connection to him was was being able to open up to a whole spectrum of emotions, not just you know, I'm an angry person, I'm going to stay angry. It's, I'm angry, let's get to the root of why I'm angry and, ex and expose that. You know, maybe it's happiness that was repressed that made me angry, or maybe it was love that was repressed that made me angry. You know, just reading his feelings helped me find my own. Sure, I made mistakes, and sure, I probably did things the absolute wrong way in a lot of ways but because of those hard times because of you know mistakes that I made along the way uh, I have found a, a decent amount of of joy and happiness in my job and that job being training people and working with athletes that gives me a lot of free time so hopefully the hardships make the time moving forward worth it we're all here for a purpose, you know, and I, I try to find that purpose every day. And I, I am thankful for the position that I'm in in life, you know, and I haven't always been thankful. I've always, sometimes in my life, I've been hateful and done things spitefully, but, you know, I'm trying to live a more thankful existence, you know, and beyond that, I try to be better than I was yesterday. If I can, and I don't mean in the weight room, I'm talking as a person, you know, if I can grow as a person every single day, um, 
And the third thing would be to help another person, even if it's just one or if it's 10. You know, if I can wake up and honestly be thankful, be better than I was yesterday and help somebody else to be better, I really don't know how a man could ask for much more in 24 hours. You know, I, I think too often times we get so focused on certain things and we get moving so fast that we forget to do those things, but I try to slow myself down and make myself do those things every single day. Workout today, what a lot of people don't understand about powerlifting is we have to peak for performance. Just like you know, a bodybuilder has to peak his, his conditioning, we have to peak performance. So uh, you know, a bodybuilder can come in and, and train hard and they can push and push and push and push and push. For us, we have to push to a certain level just to where you're almost to the point of exhaustion or the, the ledge, kind of what we call it. And then you have to give yourself time to heal up and rest and recover. What you saw today was I worked up to an opener which is um, my opening attempt for the bench, which is gonna be 551. And, um, you know, the confidence that I gained from today, being able to come in, you know, after a day of filming, um, not eating as normal that I would, and still hitting an opener pretty easily, gives me the confidence going forward into the meet. 10 days out, I always take my last bench press. Um, you know, 21 days out, I take my last deadlift. 14 days out, I take my last heavy squat. So it's a pretty calculated, um, detail for me you know some people are a little bit more random but I've been doing it for you know close to 13 years now so I, I know how my body reacts and responds for maximum performance you know it, it things can happen but overall um, you know, on meet day I'm usually pretty refreshed and ready I think it goes back to some of the stuff I talked to you guys about early in my life and like disappointment relationships early on and just really made me hesitant to open up to a lot of people you know I've had I've had a lot of friends you know that they don't know very much about me and, and that's really if you look at my Facebook or you look at my Twitter account or you look at my Instagram it's all very surface a lot of people don't really know me and it's not necessarily always intentional but I think it's protected me a lot and um, I actually have a friend I think I, I talked to uh, one of the guys when I was in New Jersey. Um, you know, he asked me about the tattoos and stuff. You know, he's like, you're a big dude, and you got the shaved head, and you got the beard, and you got the tattoos. And he's like, do you ever feel like you're just trying to keep people away? And I'd never really thought about it. Usually, um, the people that are my friends are the people that I'm with the most, which are the guys in the gym. We might be best friends, but we might not say five words the whole time we train together. You know what I mean? We ride to the gym together. We eat, we train, we go eat again, 20 words are spoken. But that dude understood me. A lot of my success has come from anger. Um, you know, when I, was, when I was coming up through the ranks in powerlifting, I was given certain opportunities that a lot of people would, you know, not to say die for, but they would, they would really want those chances. And when I was given those chances, it was kind of at a, at a, crossroads and, and other areas of my life so I took those chances and I didn't necessarily take full advantage of them so when I lost those opportunities I became very angry I became very angry at everyone around me and I was refusing to blame myself so a lot of my training and a lot of my writing and focus became you know I'm going to show this person I'm going to prove to them that I deserved another chance or I'm going to prove to them that I've probably deserved more of a chance than I was given. And in reality, you know, what you learn is you can blame everybody else that you want, but until you take ownership of those feelings and, the, and what you've actually done, you're never gonna be successful. So maybe the motivator in the beginning was anger and, and frustration, but in the end, it was what led me to, to understand myself and understand what was actually going on inside of me that led me to where I am now. There you go, man. Try them out. I don't know if you ever used them before. I haven't. Oh, they're good, man. What's your name? Jeff Glover. Brandon. Lily. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Me and my friend, like, we seen you. He's like, man, that guy's huge. <laughs> now it makes sense. You're a power lifter. Yeah. No, but um, try those out. Let me know how you think of them. Yeah, I will. 
Is it uh? It's all vitamin. You guys are legal on it. All right, that's that. That was my main question right yeah. there. Yeah, everything is good, but it's actually it's not like going to Australia is kind of like as a kid growing up in in my household and in in my town. You know, going to going to Ohio was kind of like big stuff. You know, it is you just you don't think of people doing that. And I remember thinking of the kids that would go to like Disney World and stuff like that. I thought they were the richest people in the world. So, you know, in Australia it was just, that wasn't even a thought in my mind, but to be here with the potential to go there and, and to power lift with some of the best lifters and some of the other great, great lifters of our time, I don't, I don't think it'll even, I don't even think it's begun to set in as of right now. You know, I don't think it'll set in until I'm there, until I'm on the sta platform and on the stage and, um, Actually, then I don't. I don't think I'll. I'll gain a full appreciation of it until I'm back. You know that that happened to me when I, the first time I went to California, because everything happens so fast. You know, you're there, you're going through all the procedure, you're going through the competition, and everything's just happening, bang, bang, bang. And then it probably wasn't two or three months after I got back from California that I was like, wow, you know, I this little kid from Kentucky, from Paint Lick, Kentucky, ended up in California. And as stupid as that sounds, like. When I was a kid, I thought that was impossible. You know, I thought going to California was the furthest thing that would ever happen to me. So to be going around the world to do that is just, it's, it's really humbling. You know, it's really something that I get to be a part of it. You know, when the opportunity came, it was like, for a powerlifter, to me, that's as big as it gets. You know, I mean, Universal, Animal, they, they're in all the magazines. They're a part of the the bodybuilding powerlifting culture, you know. And um, I remember being a kid in high school. Well, we were down at the gym. Me and Brad, we'd be cutting out uh, animal ads, sticking them in our locker, putting them in our in our journals. And that's the only company that I ever did that with. I never I never cut out ads from other companies. I never wanted to necessarily look like the other guys from the other companies because when I looked at the animal ads. They were dark, they were black and white, they were dirty, and they were, and that's the kind of gyms that I trained in. That's the kind of stuff that I related to. You know, guys with, you know, uh, bleach white teeth and California blonde hair and stuff. That wasn't the guys that I saw every day in the gym. I saw the guys with the toboggans, you know, the, the holes in their shirts, the holes in their shorts, just, just banging it out every day for no other reason than because they love lifting weights to get this opportunity you know they put your name out there and they say you know animal sponsors Brandon Lilly and then you get the flush of feedback from people that are like man you know I want to be just like you I want to be a kid from a small town that just busts his ass and makes it and then I can look at them in the, with a straight face and say you know what you can because I mean you, you guys have seen where I'm from I'm from nothing and not that I'm not that I'm getting rich off of it not that I'm getting famous for it but somebody took a chance on me and said, you know what, we appreciate what you're doing.